Good morning, Stamping Friends. How's everybody doing this morning? Happy Friday, and I should say Happy Good Friday. Today's going to be a good day. Um, I hope you guys all have a wonderful Easter celebration this weekend. It's one of my favorite holidays, near and dear to my heart. Well, in case you haven't been here before, my name is Lori Heiling, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and you know I love sharing projects with you. Um, I wasn't really sure how many would join me this morning, so no worries if you're not live. You can just catch the replay. That's the beauty of the internet. And um, I've just been thinking about this project in my head for quite a while, and so I finally put it together, and I thought, I'm just going to do a video or a um, live stream on it, and so I can share it with you. But before we start that, I want to... Um, go backwards to April Fool's Day. Um, did you guys do any pranks or anything? Do you, do you take part in that? I always try to think of some fun things and as I get older and we only have one left at home, I am running out of ideas so I need some new ideas for teenagers. Well, I guess then I can start on my grandkids. But I want to tell you what we or what I did yesterday. It's kind of silly. So I thought I would get our 17 year old Brayden. Um, he does school at home. So he was zooming. And while he was um, doing school, I decided to play in his bathroom. And I had to print my picture because um, I need my phone for this video. So the first picture, I'll just show you. That's what his um, toilet looked like. It's just two rolls for the eyes and then a. Um, that empty toilet roll for the, I don't know, is that a cigarette or a cigar or is it his tongue out? I don't know. I saw it on Pinterest. But this one, I took, we have white duct tape and I put it on his toilet roll. So <laughs> um, he used, he must have been using the other bathroom because he never made a comment. I should go in and look to see if he even noticed, but nothing was said. But the best one is I wanted to get Dan. And so um I, well, there's a little backstory. Sorry, this is a little bit drawn out in the beginning, but as I don't know if you knew, I was a flight attendant for 20 years and loved my job. And one of my friends and I, we used to buddy bid together and we did, um, we did kind of like little pranks on the airplane sometimes with our crew and with each other. So my friend Renee, she um, bought, she got me good with this. I'll show you up front, don't gross out, but it is a piece of plastic poo. And so I have had fun with this over the years. I know you probably don't expect things like this from me, but <laughs> anyway, so I thought, I mean, my family all knows about this. We're all kind of used to it now because I, you know, hide it here and there. So I set this on the corner of our um, toilet seat. I hope you're not going to gross out on this, but, you know, I do wash it and stuff. So um, it's not like it's real. It's just plastic. But anyway, so it really does look like poo, doesn't it? There's a close up of it. <laughs> I'm talking about this okay so the story is I put it on the side of our toilet and I was going to get Dan with it because I haven't done this on a family member for a while so I just balanced it on the edge and stuff so I did that early pretty early this morning so I wouldn't forget and then um, I was going to go walking and so before I went I was going to go in the bathroom and I went in our bathroom where the poo was and I saw it and I thought it was like a mouse or something and I jumped <laughs> <laughs> so high. This thing backfired. I mean, I used it for my husband and then I'm the one who jumped <laughs> and the think I thought it was a mouse and not poop. So anyway, on that note, <laughs> let's get started with some crafty fun. And um, that was just a really silly story. And I don't normally tell things like that, but you know what? It's, it's fun to laugh and it's fun to have fun. So let's get to the project today. All right, hold on. Today's project features a nice and bright spring stamp set called Field of Flowers, and it's in the annual catalog. And this has been a fun set to work with because it's um, just nice and springy, and it just has a fresh look. And um, I'll show you the real thing. It's called Field of Flowers, and there is also, <clears throat> excuse me, a coordinating punch that goes with this. So if you bundle these two together and buy them at the same time, you can save 10%. So the stamp set and punch together is $36, or you can buy them separately if you'd like, but I recommend both. I've used these tiny little flowers because we really don't have any dye or other punch that punches them this tiny. So let me get started with today's project. Um, 
we are going to start by stamping today. So I'm going to bring my little mat over here so I can stamp on it. And we are going to do a monogram. And what I did was I cut this, fussy cut this out of Whisper, uh, not Whisper White. It's called Basic White now. It's going to take me a year to get used to the new name. And you know what I did for you guys? I made every letter of the alphabet for you in the PDF that will be attached on my blog. So it doesn't matter what the name is that you want to use for your monogram. Um, the letter is in there. So I'm making a B because I have a grandchild with a, <clears throat> excuse me, a B name and I'm going to be using these. And I thought, I don't think Brittany, my daughter, watches these videos. So I hope not. Otherwise, she's going to see my project. But what we're going to do is we're going to take that grass stamp set and the colors we're going to use aren't these screaming um, spring magenta madness daffodil delight and granny apple green so let's start with the green and we're just going to ink this up and the bottom of the b is going to be um, grass so the only thing that I recommend is that you go off the page a little bit because I made a few of these and I went up too far and my grass was floating. So don't mind my head here while I make sure I'm off the B a little bit and just stamp like that. All right, there's a little background on the B. Flip that over. Now we want to put some flowers on here and this is, you can do a fast method or one that takes a little bit more time. But if you want to do fast, just put your flowers on the um, acrylic block and then just put it in ink and then just stamp them. But I want mine to be a little bit more 3D-ish. So I am going to grab the punch and I'm just going to punch some uh, Daffodil Delight flowers. So let's just let them go flying like confetti. And I, I'm not going to put too many on because in this case, less is more. And now I want to show you a little trick how I make these even more 3D. I take my foam mat and my picker tool, pick tool, <laughs> and I'm going to just, let's see, I know I want the tiniest ones. Let's do two of those. And then there's a medium one. Let's go about like that. I think maybe three might be enough. Then take the scoring tool end and just press down in the middle. And it is going to make all your little petals move forward so it'll be 3D. They're kind of stuck in here, but um, let me see if I can peel them off and then show you. Can you see that from your angle that they are 3D? Isn't that cool? Or you could even do a little bit of both if you wanted. You could stamp some and then put some of these down. So now let's see. I'm just going to place them randomly. One. I might have to see as I go. I guess we should do a small one on this side. And then a larger one and another small one here. All right, so let's go like this. Whoop, this is hard to get up. That's why we have the pick tool. Flip it over and then place it right, whoops, right on the glue, it went upside down again. There we go. Okay, we are almost done with this part. Now, move all these flower confetti pieces. That might be fun just to stick in the middle. Remember the old days when we used to put confetti in the middle of cards? Oh my gosh, my dad and I had fun with that when we'd write letters before email. Now, here's another layer to this. This one is offset, and so it's going to be one size larger than that. And have no fear, I have the pattern for the larger as well. Oh shoot, I made a copy of one. Oh, it's in my trash. <laughs> Let me dig it out just to see what it looks like. The pattern's going to look like this. This is just scrap paper. So you, what you can do is print it out, and you might want to print it twice, once to make the pattern of the inside one and once to make the pattern of the outside one. So if you want them layered, um, you'll need two of each. But I did it A through Z. took me a little while, but I'll do anything for you guys. <laughs> All right, so now we're just going to add some glue. Multi-purpose liquid glue works great for this because you can reposition it if you need to. You don't have to put too much on, but let's just go like that. We're going to put this on the front. And then if you want it spring, oh, you know what? There was one more thing I wanted to stamp. I can still do it, though. I took the dragonfly from um, the same stamp set, and I'm going to put a little dragonfly on it. However, I don't want it bright pink. I googled dragonfly to see what color they are. They're every color. So I'm going to stamp off once like that. So we'll go like that, and we'll make him fly over here. All right. Now, if you just want it springy, let's just quit like this. However, if you want it more Eastery, which, guys, there is time still. Today's Friday. You have one and a half days, well, Friday and Saturday, really two days still to make Easter projects. And let me show you what I 
did for the grandkids. So I took, there's even a pattern for this teeny tiny peep. You know me, I have a fetish for peeps. This is only not even, this is like five eighths inch tall. It is tiny. Then we're going to take our Stampin' Right marker, the black, and just put three little dots for his eyes and nose. And then we're going to grab a um, dimensional. For sure we need the mini ones. And I even, whoops, sorry, I'm grabbing tools as we go. I even cut some of these in half because one is maybe even too big. Flip it over. And then... Um, like this and just set him anywhere in here oh gosh where should i put him i think i'll put him over on this side there he is now it's a uh, an easter bee all right the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to turn this one into um it's for a gift and so i'm going to turn it into a tag and you could stamp like happy birthday down there if you wanted there's so many possibilities with this idea so i'm just going to go in the corner here and then i did wrap a package and I just got this at Joanne's, I don't know, it was a Christmas wrap, but I've seen this wrap because wood grain is still so in. And so um, you can just pick up similar wrapping paper. And then I'm taking our braided linen trim. This also is retiring and oh, this is such a good, just basic trim. It's a little bit bigger than our linen thread. It's 3 sixteenths of an inch wide. And so we're just gonna tie around the bottom here. And I'm kind of hoarding, hoarding this. I guess I could order more ribbon. I didn't check to see if this is sold out yet, but um, once I heard it was retiring. All right, so what I like to do is tie a knot first. Then you don't have to try to keep that bow tight. You know what I mean? So now we can let go of it and not fret while we're tying the bow. Then loop it through here. And then I usually tie it one more time like this and then just tie it in a bow. And really, you could use any ribbon. The reason I chose the linen color is because of the wood grain, but you know, bright would be pretty too. And then um, let's just trim this down. Whoops, there we go. And then I pulled the bow loose when I cut it. There we go. All right, so there, and I kind of offset it a little bit. And if you don't like it dangling like that, you can go ahead and, actually, let's go on this side. You can um, put a dimensional under here, but I don't think it'll be too much bother if it moves around. So that's really all I wanted to show you, but I wanna show you the other ones that I made um, for Easter for grandkids. I just used glassine envelopes that, um, you can get these I believe at craft stores. Stampin' Up! used to sell them and I have a stash of bags. So I just taped them down to here. So one grandkid is A, the other one's already mailed. So these are the local ones who haven't received theirs yes, yet. Then R for Reese, S for Stella, B for Blake. So I made his a little more masculine with blue. So anyway, those are my projects. And um, remember, the, um, just download that PDF and you can make any letter that you want. And that's my gift to you. It's a freebie. And then there's the gift that we did. And if you find any products that you want to order, I would really appreciate it if you use my host code when you go to my um, Stampin' Up! store. I can put the links in for you. And like I said, um, some of these products are retiring, so you'll want to grab them before they're gone. Thank you so much for joining me, and we will see you next Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Arizona time. Bye, everyone. Happy Easter as well.